Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation. And in today's video, we are doing an amplifier and subwoofer install in this Chevy Tahoe. Now in this install, we're gonna show you how to tap into the factory system, what run all our cables and get that amp in sub installed. Let's get started. Now, before we dive right in, just a couple of things to note. Your same model may be uh, Tahoe, Suburban, Yukon. Um, it's all really about the same. It's all GM. You may or may not have the factory upgraded Bose amplifier. Now, if you do, or if you're not sure if you do, you'll have the Bose logo on the tweeter grills on the eight pillars, and we'll show you what that looks like. If you have that logo, it kind of changes our install a little bit as we'll need to tap in to the factory system in a different location instead of just pulling out the radio and snagging some wiring there. So we'll get there just in a moment. Just kind of keep that in mind as we progress through this install today. Now what we need to do first is jump to the bench and show you the parts we're going to need for our install. So here at the bench, first and foremost, the amplifier that we've decided to go with or the customer wants is this SCAR Audio 1500 watt RMS amplifier. This is the RP-1500.1D. It's a class D amplifier. It does about 1500 watts at one ohm as a mono block amplifier. Now to wire that into the vehicle, we also went with this SCAR Audio OFC four gauge wiring kit. It's a great mate with this uh, amplifier. Essentially, this wiring kit includes your power wire, your ground, your big fuse holder, comes with RCA, speaker wire, and your remote turn on wire. So everything's included in this and it's a good kit for the price. Now to integrate our amplifier into the factory sound system, since in our case we have Bose, uh, we're just gonna go with the simple SNI-35 by pack, just a simple line-out converter. And there's all different types of line-out converters on the market. There's nicer ones, especially with a little bit more tuning capability, like an audio control LC2Y. You can go with the DSP. Again, it's up to you and your budget. In today's video, we're just using this simple pack. So at this point of time, the first thing we need to do is pull our kit apart. We're gonna grab our power wire and start running that through the vehicle. So with the hood open here, we took our cover off our battery terminals just so we can talk about it. Also off our fuse and distribution over here. So a couple of ways that we can hook this up. Now there's not really a great terminal here on the battery to hook up an amplifier. This terminal here is actually specifically for the clamp mechanism on the terminal. It is not really designed to add accessories to it. Um, and then there's no other accessory here. You just kind of have this cover that goes up and over this piece here. Again, it's not really meant for anything else. Looking further back here, we actually took the cover off our fuse holder here that is installed by the factory. And you can see there's a 175 amp ANL fuse in there from the factory. This end goes to our battery, and then this end goes, that goes to our fuse and relay box. And the other one is actually our charge cable that comes right from the alternator. Um, so this guy, if you follow it down, goes up and over, over to our alternator installed there. So really probably the easiest place to hook up an amplifier is in this distribution. I'd actually suggest adding it after the factory fuse just because your alternator charge is coming in here and that's probably better that we don't put any extra load on this 175 amp fuse. So we will probably go there with our amplifier install. Also you could go probably directly to the alternator itself off the positive post. But that's your call, just depends on the wattage. If you're doing a small sub, going here or even potentially here should be just fine. So once we get our wiring hooked up, we'll run our wiring through an inline fuse along this factory loom. Then we'll go through the firewall following the factory wiring through that rubber boot down below. All right, we need to prepare pulling our wire through the firewall. Now down there is the factory grommet. And what we did is we poked a hole to the very side of it so we could stay away from any factory wiring and we used a little hanger and pushed it all the way through so what our goal is here is we pull that wire through and the wire is through the grommet it'll actually maintain the seal preventing moisture from getting inside the cabin through that hole so we have a wire we push it through the other side and we have our wire taped to it we got some soap and water on it so it's nice and slippery so it should easily pull on through and we'll show you where it comes out the other side now down here, there is the other end to our wire hanger. 
just comes off through. So really what we'll do from this end is just go ahead and pull it through the firewall. Just like so. All right, so we got our fuse holder mounted. As you saw there, it bolts up to the factory location. It's nice and snug, ready to go. Excited to go this side because this is our alternator charge. With everything connected, bolted down. We did this, of course, with the negative off the battery. We don't ever want to do this with the negative on the battery, especially with that metal ratchet. As we're moving it around, there's plenty of places that we could touch and, and create a short circuit. So just be very careful. So with that all hooked up, ready to go with the negative smell off the battery, we won't put the negative on until we're all done. Um, but we ran and split loomed our wire. And just for your reference, we did put wire ferrules in there as well. So wire is nice and protected. Put heat shrink over those ferrules where they're exposed to prevent any corrosion. And then ran our split loom over our power wire across the engine bay, zip tying it to existing lube. Then we went through the firewall. So at this point, we are done under the hood besides hooking up the negative when we're ready for that. Let's head to the inside and continue running our power wire along the kick panel to the back area of the vehicle. Now here we are in the back bin to mount our amplifier up underneath the seat here. And uh, we want to prep our wire here we we have it out from underneath the carpet basically it goes up underneath that there's a little passage under the carpet and we come out there um, now for our ground we pull this apart just to show you what it would take if you use this as a ground boat you got to clean up the paint so these are all 18 nuts that are holding this in we use the wire brush to clean that up so it's nice clean paint or alternatively, we're going to tap and do a, our own bolt right there next to it. And it actually will clear this bracket pretty well if we do it that way. So two different ways. If you don't want to create your own mounting location, you can go to the stud. But we spend about 20 minutes just trying to clean up the paint really well. So we wanted to show you both ways. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and tap our own bolt and uh, use an impact to get that all driven in. All right, so we got the seat all remounted. Nice thing is the ground is nice and hidden underneath that bracket. It's not getting crushed or anything. It's off to the side. It's about this location right there. So we have our power and ground ready to go. We started prepping our RCA's remote turn on wire. We tape them about every six to eight inches. Um, and we're prepping to get our amplifier mounted. Now, here is our beauty board that was there from the factory. What we did is we found the location we're mounting our amplifier. Nice thing is this is heavy duty plastic and so we don't have to really build a mount. We can go right to it. And we put a small hole there for the RCAs and a big enough hole to run both four gates through there as well as our speaker wire. Um, so what we're gonna do at this point now is start feeding our wire up through this board, running our wire and getting our board down so we can start prepping, getting everything connected to the amplifier. Once that's done, the last thing we really need to do is run our RCA's and remote turn on wire towards the front. We need to tap in our line-out converter in the center console to the Bose amplifier. And also find a remote turn on wire, or wire essentially that boots up when the car is on. All right, so we got the board down. Everything's nice and flush. We'll still have to trim sizes and such, but we got our power and ground and remote as well as our speaker wire. And then on the other side, we have our RCAs and base knob wire. And our speaker wire just comes out there and it's going to go right into the terminal of our 
Scar Audio box. So now it's time just to uh, start hooking up terminals here, um, getting everything nice and tidy. All right, so we've got the amp all mounted and wired up here. It actually turned out really nice. Everything's hooked up to the length. Got our subwoofer all hooked up. Nice heavy OFC 12 gauge. Now, finally, we just need to finish running our RCA cables and a remote turn on the wire and a tap in for signal and an ignition source. So at this point, we need to prep our line out converter. Now you saw us remove the center console on this harness here. This four pin harness is our output to the subwoofer, the factory sub here in the center console. And that's what we need to tap into for our signal. Now we're gonna go ahead and strip the wires back, which we did. The way we strip the wires without cutting the wires, we use these type of wire strippers, which basically grab the wire, and then they strip back the shielding. Then using a pick tool, I went ahead and poked the wire through the copper, so you have a little loop in there. But then what we're gonna do with our line out converter is stick it through those holes and then wrap it around there. We're gonna solder onto those so they're nice and secure. So let's go ahead and make our connection. All right, so we soldered on everything here. We just need to tape it up. So our positive wires are the darker ones, so a blue with a white stripe. We have a dark green, that's our positive wires. And then our lighter colors, a light blue with a black stripe is our negative wire. So we've got our pairs all soldered up there. We're gonna wrap each pair in electrical tape. Then we'll wrap the whole harness in some tested tape and uh, hook up our lineup converter. So we started running our RCAs, you saw us come out there. Same thing like the power wire, just went under panels, they just held on with clips. Continued along, and we went up and actually into this panel. It just hangs in there, which is great. Pulled this panel out. Now our RCA was fed up into here, and that's where it'll connect to our line-out converter. And then for a remote turn-on wire, that's where it branched off and went this way, and we'll show you on the other side where to connect. Better remote turn the wire through the center console here. We tucked it back behind the carpet. You can actually also go up and over the, the pedals as well as zip tying it to existing wiring. But we ran it under the carpet, it comes up here. And that pin we've connected into right there is an accessory pin that wasn't being used. Essentially, it's on only when the key is on. So we put a um, female spade connector, crimped it on, and then plugged it on in. Then we can put this cover back on. All right, so we got everything buttoned up in there, all nice and reloomed. We'll just zip tie that pack audio adapter so it doesn't move around in there. Now we can put our cup holders back in. All right, since our amplifier is all hooked up, we went ahead and got the negative back on the battery. Everything looks great here, nice and clean and zip tied. We're done under the hood. All right, so with uh, everything hooked up, we've got the truck running here, everything's hooked up. The uh, LED lights illuminated. Got our box all wired up, ready to go. Tested everything and uh, it's working great. We set our gains with an SMD DD1, so it's all matched up with the factory radio, which is perfect. So at this point, we are just about done with the install. Center console is all back together. We got some base. That's about it for this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, post a comment below. Um, this thing rocks, it's shaking everything and uh, super happy on the way it turned out for 1500 watts. It's a, it's a big bassy system. Appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe and post great content on the channel all the time. And we will see you in the next video.